Good afternoon. This is Ken of Tortoise Capital. Just a quick class on how we manage our daily debriefings at the live trading workshops and how we convert that into long-term personal learning and operational improvement. So we start with groups of three and we conduct the daily debriefing at the end of the trading day. It lasts about 30 minutes in which we identify the best thing, the least effective, the best takeaway, the biggest surprise, and the biggest question from the trading day. The best thing is maybe the thing with the most potential. The least effective is something we know we want to work on. The best takeaway is something that we did that was of immediate and permanent use. The biggest surprise usually represents a shift in a worldview in which the, our assumption about how the world works was surprised into a different point of view. And so often that becomes the pathway to finding deeper sources of sense-making that were automatic or were not consciously chosen. And then the biggest question is what we're going to work on. We then uh, go to large group debriefing and we gather insights from all of these sources and follow up with um, explanations or clarifications. And then for those questions, we go deeper and we provide additional explanations or follow up in writing. <coughs> or program some more lessons. Well, we use the Cornell note-taking method to keep track of all new information and experiences. And in the first column, we put keywords. Second chunk, we put notes to self and explanations. And then in the bottom, we do a synthesis where we ask ourselves good critical thinking questions or follow up for actions. And that goes into the four-column learning journal in which we put the aha moment or the insight, uh, some reflective thinking notes about what we think about it from different points of view, and then a commitment to action in the form of a smart goal that leads to a hypothesis and an experiment which gives us results and which then can roll back into evidence-based learning and is quite often the source of the next aha moment. The other part of the debrief that we do is that we consider the plan, prepare, execute, and assess phases of the day's trade and we identify things we want to sustain and improve and also commit to action one or two things that we want to fix when you take all of these proposed actions and other commitments to actions from Cornell and then from the daily after action review this goes into our master management to-do list prioritized by A, B, and C short term and long term uh, and priority A are things that I must do, B, I should do, C, would be nice to do. Then from that pick list come the, I, uh, the items that are in uh, the queue waiting to get worked on. Then we pick just a few things that are the combination of the most important and the most urgent. And we use that to minimize work in, pro uh, in process to just a couple things. Multitasking doesn't work. Having too many things doesn't work. But having only one thing can sometimes lead to stalemate. So the brain likes to move back and forth between a couple things. So we're doing sequential cycling as long as the transaction uh, cost is not great, like two separate work workspaces so you're not involved in setup and teardown. And then work that gets completed is noted over here and for celebration and, uh, uh, and, uh, and awareness of just of the progress that we're making, right? So this is a combination of different tools and mental models, simple, easy, elegant, analog, dry erase. It could be even magnetized boards or pencil notes. Uh, but it serves me well over the last 30 years to just keep things moving and going and achieving results. So I share these with you. And that's what we do at the learning workshops and what we do in our coaching and how we handle our daily business. So thanks for your kind attention.